Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys the Series anime video. In this video I want to talk about the new opening theme for the Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime. That's right, this series has a new opening theme as of episode 32, which is the latest episode at the time of recording and uploading this video. I was eagerly awaiting a new opening theme because I knew that one would be coming soon since this series already has more than 30 episodes and because I knew that a new opening could reveal what's going to happen in the future of this series. About two weeks ago, I read confirmation that a new opening was indeed coming and that it would be used for the first time in episode 32, so I was very much looking forward to watching episode 32, just so that I could see the new opening, and I was not disappointed. The new opening features some very exciting things, so let's check it out. Now, before I talk about what the new opening showed, I want to talk about the song itself, because while I say that it is a new opening, it is still technically the same song, 1, 2, 3. The difference is that it is performed by different people. Back when this series began, it was announced that this would be the case, that different people would perform 1, 2, 3 while giving it their own spin. The 1, 2, 3 that was used in episodes 1 through 31 is performed by the group After the Rain, while the new 123 is performed by Takanori Nishikawa, better known as TM Revolution, and Kirisho from the band Golden Bomber. So this new opening could be considered as version 2 of the original as far as the song goes. Personally, I do like the original more, though they are both great. I probably like the first version more because I have heard it the most. Once I hear the new one a few more times, it will be a more even comparison. The visual part of the opening, on the other hand, is completely new, and that is what the rest of the video will focus on. So the first thing I want to talk about is legendary Pokemon. There is a segment in the opening where Ash and Go look at the screen that is in Sakuragi or Series Institute. This screen shows several legendary Pokemon in their respective groups, with their respective regions behind them. So these legendary Pokemon are essentially representing their respective regions. It could be that this is all they are doing. They are symbolizing each region since this series is all about traveling to every region. But I think that this could mean that each of these legendary Pokemon will have episodes dedicated to them. This series already had episodes about Lugia and Ho-Oh who appear on the screen to represent the Johto region. This series has also had episodes centered on mythical Pokemon like Celebi, so it is very much possible that more legendary and mythical Pokemon could receive episodes that center around them. These episodes would speak about the myths and legends surrounding the legendary Pokemon as well as their significance to their respective regions. I think that these episodes would be pretty cool. Sassian and Samacent are definitely going to receive this treatment since they represent the latest generation of games and especially because the anime will feature the darkest day, but more on that later. It's worth noting that a later segment shows Go who takes a Pokeball, and said Pokeball shoots out a lightning bolt that turns into Sabdos, and then Articuno and Moltres also show up. The three of them also show up in the previously discussed segment to represent the Kanto region. Now you could say that maybe Go will catch Sabdos since it comes out of the Pokeball Go had, but I feel that this is probably a stretch. I feel that this recurring appearance of the legendary bird trio indicates that they will probably appear in this series at some point. This prominence in the opening could also be because the three of them will be getting new Galar forms in the upcoming Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion, the Crown Tundra. Perhaps we will even get an episode where the Kanto and Galarian forms meet, which would be very cool indeed. Next up we have Ash's party. His current party shows up running forth together. It's great to see them all together, and I love that Farfetch'd is flying on Dragonite's back, like a knight with its trusty steed. I was hoping that a segment like this would reveal what else Ash would catch in this series, that it would reveal what he will catch next. I almost delayed my previous video for this reason, because I wanted to include what the opening revealed in that video. At first I was disappointed because nothing of the sort was shown, but the opening was just too fast and I could not catch it on my first watch. Upon closer inspection, I realize that an Aerodactyl shows up, it dodges Pikachu's Thunderbolt, and it seems like Ash's party is charging towards it. My first thought was, could Ash catch Aerodactyl? Is this what is being hinted at by Aerodactyl's appearance? Looking at these images, which I showed in my previous video, I think that the last unknown Pokemon could be Aerodactyl. I think that a fossil Pokemon is worth keeping secret. 
Aerodactyl does share some similarities with Dragonite and Gengar. They are old Generation 1 Pokemon that Ash has seen several times throughout his journeys. More specifically, he ran into them during his travels through the Kanto region, but he did not catch any of them. In Aerodactyl's case, Ash ran into one in the episode Attack of the Prehistoric Pokemon. In this episode, the Aerodactyl took Ash and it flew away with him. It also mocked Ash's Charmeleon, which is what ultimately led to its evolution into Charizard. In the end, this Aerodactyl was put to sleep by Jigglypuff and it was sealed deep into the earth. I do think that Ash could catch Aerodactyl and it would be an awesome addition to his team. Now, Aerodactyl appears to be charging Ash's team from the opposite direction. Go shows up later from the same direction alongside Sobble and Reboot. Gengar has a Shadow Ball in his hands and it looks like it's going to attack Sobble for whatever reason. It could be that Gengar is just being the mischievous prankster it's known for, or this could be hinting at a battle between Ash and Go. I guess it's possible, but Go still shows no interest in battling, so it's probably unlikely. Sobble vanishes in fear of Gengar and Reboot steps in to launch an Ember at Gengar. It's possible that Aerodactyl is charging forward from Go's direction, meaning that Go could be the one to catch it, though Aerodactyl does seem to be between Ash and Go, with both trainers charging towards it. Pikachu even attacks it, so perhaps this indicates that they both want to catch Aerodactyl, and they might battle for the right to catch it as a result, like when Ash fought Misty over Totodile. This would explain why Gengar was ready to attack Sobble and why Raboot fights back. In any case, Aerodactyl would not show up in the opening just because, so an Aerodactyl will probably appear in a future episode, and either Ash or Go will catch it. Of course, I hope that Ash will be the one to catch it. There is another shot of Ash's team, but this time Mr. Mime is included as well. I have mentioned before that there is evidence that suggests that Mr. Mime is part of Ash's team, but there is also evidence to suggest it's not. Regardless, Mr. Mime appearing with Ash's team here is not unusual. What is unusual is that Yamper is also here with Ash's team, which is curious. Why is Yamper here? Yamper appears earlier in the opening with Koharu or Chloe, which does make sense, but then it appears here again with Ash and his team. This could be the same Yamper who is just appearing here, because it's joining the fun by jumping and smiling alongside Ash and his Pokemon. Or, it could be a different Yamper than the one Koharu has. A Yamper that Ash will catch. What makes this more plausible is this image from the first ending theme, which I have shown in several videos. In my previous video on Ash's team and future captures, I mentioned that the last circle in this image has yet to be realized. All of the other circles predicted Ash's team up to Riolu, but what the last circle predicts remains a mystery. Yamper appears on this last circle, so could it be that this circle has been predicting that Ash would catch Yamper? I previously disregarded Yamper as a possible capture for Ash because Koharu or Chloe already has one. I mentioned that maybe this circle could point to what she will catch when and if she becomes a trainer for this very reason. So could Ash catch Yamper? After the new opening in this image, I think that it is very much a possibility. Go then shows up with his Pokemon, Raboot and Sobble appear once again and they are now joined by Scyther, Magikarp and Farfetch'd, which have been getting a lot of screen time recently, especially when compared to Go's other Pokemon. Skuobet also appears despite not getting as much screen time as the previous five. The interesting thing here is that a Flygon appears here as well. Someone commented on my last video that they thought Ash would catch a Flygon. I wondered why they thought this and I figured it was probably because an image leak that suggested that a Flygon would appear in the anime soon. So when I saw this segment the first thing I thought was oh there's the Flygon. But Go will catch it instead of Ash, a fact a lot of people have pointed out in response to that previously mentioned comment. I really liked the idea of Ash catching a Flygon, but I guess it was never meant to be. So Go will be catching a Flygon in the future. More specifically, Go will catch Flygon in episode 36, which is currently listed as Ash and Go crawl up from the sand tomb. There is one final shot of Ash's team that is devoid of Yamper and Mr. Mime, as well as a final shot of Go and his team that features Raboot, Sobo, Scyther, Flygon, and Heracross. So Go will catch a Heracross as well, and he will catch it in episode 33, since a Heracross is featured quite prominently in the preview for episode 33. 
This episode is, at the time of recording and uploading, the next episode to air. Neither Aerodactyl nor Yamper show up here in the end. Next up, we have these pictures of Ash, Go, their Pokemon, Raihan, and Leon. At first, I wondered, when did this happen? When did Ash and Go take these pictures? Because it definitely did not happen on screen. Ash and Go watched the battle between Leon and Raihan in episode 27. Ash talked to Leon briefly, and after that, Leon and Raihan were not seen again. I noticed that Sobble appears in the picture, so these pictures could only have been taken after episode 28. So I thought that they were probably taken off screen between episodes 28 and 29. However, there is a segment in the opening of Leon and Raihan battling each other. And it does not appear to be the same battle from episode 27, especially considering that they are on opposite sides of the battlefield. So I think that Leon and Raihan will have a rematch in the future. Ash and Go will watch that battle as well. After the battle, they will meet with Leon and Raihan face to face, which will lead to the pictures that are shown before. I think this is quite possible and it would be great, especially since I was a bit disappointed with episode 27 because Ash did not get to meet or battle Raihan. Ash's Dragonite also shows up in the pictures, which further supports that these pictures will be taken in the future, because Ash probably did not have Dragonite with him in episode 27, since he keeps his Pokemon on standby at Sakuragi or Ceres Park unless he needs them. Dragonite's appearance in the pictures suggests that Ash will have Dragonite with him when Leon and Raihan have the rematch, and he would only have Dragonite with him if he was to battle, so maybe Ash will get to battle Raihan and he will use Dragonite. What better way to battle a Dragon-type specialist than with a Dragon-type Pokemon? Since Ash will be battling Bea soon, it stands to reason that he might end up facing all the Galar gym leaders at some point. And speaking of Bea, she also appears in the opening and she appears with her grab locked. Bea will appear in episode 34 where she will battle Ash, presumably as part of the Pokemon World Championships or World Coronation series. This has been known for a while and there is even an image of her grab lock facing Ash's Riolu. Like I have mentioned before, I feel that Riolu might evolve in this episode considering that this will be Riolu's toughest battle yet. I definitely can't wait to watch this episode. Next, we have Ash's friends from the Alola region. They all appear in the opening except for Lilia since she is on a trip with Lusamine and Gladian. The fact that they appear in the opening means that they will be returning to the anime. Ash has yet to travel to the Alola region in this new series, so when he does, he will be reuniting with his friends. And presumably with Kukui as well, which means that Ash will also reunite with his Pokemon from the Sun and Moon series. Which means this will be a great episode, or series of episodes for sure. I wonder if Lycanroc will have any special significance since it appears in the second ending theme. Now it's not surprising that Ash's friends from Alola will be returning, because in my video where I discuss things I would love to see in this new series, I mentioned that Ash's friends tend to return in the series after their introduction, as evidenced by May's return in Sinnoh, Dawn's return in Unova, and Silent's return in Kalos. So I said that Ash's friends from Alola would be the most likely to return in this new series. But I would be surprised if they are the only ones to return, considering that this series is all about traveling to every region. Ash's friends from Kalos and Iris have yet to return too, so I think that they are way overdue for a returned appearance. And finally, we have what is, in my opinion, the most exciting moment in the entire opening. Ash and Go are both seen ready to fight Eternatus in its Eternamax form. And what's in front of Ash at this moment? Oh yeah, Lucario. This confirms that Ash's Riolu will indeed evolve into Lucario, which is not surprising of course. I said that this was going to happen in several videos and I even made a video entirely about Riolu and its future. However, while it is not surprising, it is certainly very exciting to finally see Lucario with Ash. And Ash is not the only one that has an evolved Pokemon in front of him. Cinderace appears in front of Go which means, of course, that Raboot will evolve in the future, which is surprising. I figured Raboot would not evolve because it is a partner or companion Pokemon. It's always outside of its Pokemon. Being small is more suitable for such a role, so I figured it would not evolve, but it seems that it will. I guess that Raboot's Ember resembles Pyroball because they were hinting at Scorbunny reaching its final form, 
back when it first learned the move. In this segment, Ash and Go are facing Eternatus in its Eternamax form, which means that the Darkest Day will indeed be featured in the anime, for sure. It was obvious that Eternatus would make a major appearance in the anime since it did appear briefly back in episode 12. But it was not clear then if the Darkest Day would happen in the anime. The appearance of Sonia and Chairman Rose in episode 27 means that it will happen indeed, and this segment in the new opening theme just reinforces that. It seems that Ash and Go might play the same roles that the player character and Hop play in Pokemon Sword and Shield, which means they will battle alongside Sassian and Samacenta. The altar where the two of them sleep, which is housed deep within the slumbering wield, also appears in the opening, which only reinforces the fact that Sassian and Samacenta will play a big role in the anime. And that is every single exciting thing that was shown in the new opening for the Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime. A lot of amazing things will happen in the future of this series, and I absolutely can't wait to experience all of them. But that's the video. As always, leave your own thoughts down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.